Hello, I'm Anne-Marie Pierman and today I'm joined by Caroline Powell from A Slice of Happiness. Caroline is the founder of A Slice of Happiness, which helps people um, facing homelessness and with their mental health issues based in Watford. So thanks for joining me today, Caroline. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you for inviting <laughs> That's me. That's okay. So I know you were a successful businesswoman up till about 2017, where you decided to chuck it all in and um, put your focus into A Slice of Happiness. And yeah. where did you come up with the idea for A Slice of Happiness? Where did the gem of A Slice of Happiness come from? That's a really good question. Where did it come from? I know what happened where I realised that it could be a possibility. Um, so my former career was a state agency for my sins. Um and that's it. I had my own challenges behind closed doors and trying to number of different things, which worked temporarily. But then I kind of defaulted back to my craziness, which then every time that happened, it just reconfirmed to me that, yeah, I was definitely broken. When you've got a counsellor saying you shouldn't even be here now, that kind of hits home. That's like... <laughs> She's a professional. She knows <laughs> what she's talking about. So my story is really valid. And separate to that, I started volunteering for street outreach charity in Slough called London and Slough Charity. And that's it. Just started volunteering with them. We're street homeless going into London. And at the same time, around the same time, I came uh, across this conversation in the three principles which was a very different understanding. And there were suggestions being put forward that I was mentally healthy and not broken. Mm. And then I had an insight and I saw that to be true, which impacted me to the point that I cried for like three hours one night just with relief because I'd always thought my mum in particular just didn't have any love for me. I didn't understand mm why she behaved the way that she did. And so, yeah, to have an insight around that and that weight just lift off me. Yeah, I started having conversations with those that were on the streets. And I remember I was up near the embankment and there was a gentleman that I was speaking to. And I even see it now. And he walked off and then he turned around. He smiled at me. He said, keep spreading the good word. Aww. Yeah, I could still see him now. And at that point, I was like, yeah, do you know what? Maybe I can do this and have, convers you know, a conversation once a week or whenever and just help, you know, just put a smile on their face, help them see that they're not broken and just because they're not fitting in with this idea of who we're meant to be and written off that... Mm -hmm they can see how amazing that they are and wake that side of them up. So, um, yeah, that was literally the insight, what happened. And as I said, it was only meant to be. <laughs> I'll just hang out once a week or once a month and have some conversations. And it really just snowballed from there. And all of a sudden I started getting thoughts coming through like, maybe you could do this on a more permanent basis. and But I didn't really pay too much attention to it. So I had my estate agency skills, which involves door knocking. <laughs> and I was knocking on lots of doors and telling people how amazing, because I was doing my own research into it as well. You know, there is, in like global successful models, there's so much research that's been done globally about it. I also went into... Um, the prison where I was kindly invited by Jacqueline Hollows mm. if I wanted to go in the prison and shadow a programme and that, that blew me away. Like the work that Jacqueline done yeah. in the background to get this in front of prisoners really kind of touched me because now having gone through the journey, I know how tough it is to try and introduce something new in the system and the work that she done in the background is absolutely incredible to enable a group of amazing facilitators to be able to go in there and deliver. And I was like, okay, well, maybe if Jacqueline could do it, maybe I can. And 
yeah, but all the doors I was knocking on, a lot of them, they just kept getting shut in my face. So, and then a lovely gentleman called Bob Jones from Watford and Three Rivers Trust reached out and said, can we have a meeting? I'm curious to know what you're doing down there. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it started from there and he took me under his wing and for the last eight years, he's been the most incredible mentor. He's been gentle. He's been kind. He's been given, he gives different perspectives, things that I don't understand or I might be frustrated about or be a little bit resistant about. He takes the time with me, sits down, he gives me examples and he's helped open up a pathway whereby we are able to go through a door that's now open with a really good possibility and a really good invitation and knowledge to find our way, to find our place so that we can work alongside other interventions, other organisations and just add our little slice, really. The name of Slice of Happiness, happiness came from the man who smiled when he walked hmm. off. A slice of is because a slice being that we're just pointing them mm. in effect. It's just a slice because they've got the whole cake within them anyway. Mm. And the A from a business acumen, A brings you up the top of alphabetical listings. Oh, if anyone, yeah. oh God, yeah, that, that, that <laughs> intellect <laughs> had to throw in there somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, A brings you up the top of the um, alphabetical listings as well. So um I was like, well, if anyone looks for mental health as support, I want us to be up there. I want people to see what we're doing. So, but yeah, it's been an absolutely incredible journey. It really has, which I'm very grateful for. And so. I know you have your own personal history with homelessness. Would you like to talk about that yeah. a bit? That's really weird because that never actually comes up. I never actually recognised it was <laughs> homelessness until I started working with homelessness. Like, to me... Homelessness was just street homeless and that was it. You know, I didn't realise that the word homelessness was an umbrella, mm -hmm. you know, for temporary accommodation in hostels, um, sofa surfing, mm -hmm. living with a friend. I'm like, wow, all these different, then all, all these different people fall under this umbrella of homelessness. Yeah. And then I was like, Wow, so that means I was homeless <laughs> when I was 16 and I, I moved out and um, made myself homeless. And I was. I was sofa surfing. I lived in a room. I kind of might have slept a little bit in my car down at Bournemouth Beach. But I just kind of floated. Mm. But I have to, like, for me, I personally, I loved it. I really did enjoy it because I'd spent a childhood growing up where a lot of it was just being locked in a room. Mm. So all of a sudden I'm like, da da I've got freedom. So, yeah, I really enjoyed the experience. Um, but, yeah, it's only it's really weird. I'd never even, even seen it through that lens mm -hmm. until I came across this and understood the intellectual interpretation of homelessness, you know? So, yeah. I mean, I'm the same. I think when you say the word homeless, you think people on the streets begging, you know, in a sleeping bag or whatever. You just don't think of the bigger picture that people, it's just anybody who hasn't got a home or a permanent residence. So Yeah. You know, and those as well, like we've got a cost of living crisis mm. as well at the moment, which is really impacting people, you know? So those that have got a mortgage... You know, that they, they got on, what, 1%? Yeah. And all of a sudden, the rates have shot up above 5%. Mm. You know, organisations may have streamlined their employees' hours. I mean, there's so many different examples that can be given where people are, like, in effect, like, who feel, fi who are financially unstable at mm. the moment, you know, they're seeing their company are doing redundancies. There's so many different flavours that can be added to that. So, like, as an organisation, like, we've worked together with, like, Innate Health Research and also Coventry University, Watford and Three Rivers Trust, who have opened up the doors for us to have conversations, public health, mm. NHS, job centre. All of a sudden, we had a bit of credibility going in and having conversations. And it's it's been fascinating to listen to everyone, local services as well, 
it's been fascinating to have conversations and just to see how what lens do they look at it through mm. what do they find helps what doesn't so that together with exit interviews from over 600 beneficiaries over <laughs> seven eight years you know it's given me a real good open perspective the gaps where support's needed, where people's thinking are, what, you know, what they're struggling with, you know, and I'm just getting an insight into their lives, which I feel very grateful for that I've been able to see inside their world, you know, whether it's a service provider, mm. a statutory level beneficiary, it's, like, so I find it a real privilege to be able to see inside their world. So we've kind of gone through a transition ourselves in the last since October last year, because under Watford and Three Rivers Trust, we are classed as a project, but we've been running for so long and started having a little bit of feedback from funders and other organisations. We've really kind of outgrown being just a project. We can't really, can't cut that one anymore. So we talked through different options and what direction we felt that we were going in. You know, the reason why, why do we start this? How near are we to this? The reasons why we wanted to do it and kind of refocusing. Um, so, yeah, since October, we've actually been in a massive transition in the background where we're moving away from Watford and Three Rivers Trust to set up as our own independent legal entity, which is due to go live at the end of this month Ooh. so yeah because also like what's happened throughout that time this every single person that a slice of happiness has worked with supported has been part of this amazing journey part of this amazing story some of them have only come in for a chapter some of them have come in for a few chapters and there's ones that have kind of been there in the background you're one of them yeah you're one of them. If they silent in the background, you volunteer in the background for us. You're there when people are coming to us like in a time where they're really struggling in life. And once every eight weeks, you volunteer your time to ring up people mm -hmm. and to show them compassion yeah. and meet them where they're at. There's never any moaning. You're always very, like you're very solid and reliable in that way. Um, and again, it's grateful, but... I mean, there must, there's so many different people who've played a part in this journey, mm. but it was kind of getting to a point where it had to move in one direction and it seemed that it was kind of moving in two different mm. directions as such. And the direction that I chose to go with in the end is the unknown, you know. I've gone with the unknown, but as a result, there's an incredible, incredible group of people and even more that are gravitating to that. And I've been completely honest. I'm like, look, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> right? um, one of the comments was, was like, yeah, no, we want to come and play in your sound pit. But like, it was just beautiful. It was just like, what do we need to do? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I help? You know, want to work as a team. And, you know, it's so nice to go into a meeting and listen to other people's ideas and insights, you know. So there's that part. And also what doing community work, there's also, you know, there's guidelines in place like legal responsibilities, which in effect is the law. It's there to protect our beneficiaries, how we show up professionally, you know. So there's a lot that mentoring comes from watford and three rivers trust but yeah there's a there's wonderful people that are kind of gravitating to it so that we can meet our legal responsibilities that we can show up professionally and this incredible seed like it's the biggest seed i've ever seen that has kind of unfolded in the background very silently over the years that I feel something really beautiful is going to come from it. So the kind of bare bones of it is all being finalised. But yeah, that will be launching at the end of this month. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, like I said, I don't know where it's going to take anybody, but it's got a really 
cool feeling to it. And it makes me smile yeah. as well every time I think of it. So, yeah. Sounds exciting. And talking about sounding exciting, looking at your bio last night, uh, you were invited to Buckingham Palace. Would you like to talk about that, how that came oh my about? Oh, gosh, that was years ago. <laughs> I don't even mention that. So, But that was like when I was doing street yeah. outreach work with, um, it was another organisation, Slough Outreach, mm-hmm. who, again, do incredible work of service, even like for years, every single week, week in, week out. They go out regardless. And like obviously when I started doing this and there was doors being shut in my face and myself and Shin, who runs our organisation, we, I said, he just reached out one day and I really got a good feeling when I spoke to him and started doing work with him. So he was kind of doing the food and not just that. He does so much more. He's a really strong advocate for street homeless like really, really does deliver from his heart Mm -hmm. on that aspect. So, yeah, the invitation came through and obviously I was part of them. So, yeah, it was... Went up to see and had a, had a cup of tea in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> <laughs> which was, like, they've got really cool water and beautiful cups. And so it's amazing, like, because we're just in the process of redoing our website. So mm-hmm. part of that was going through all the photos since day dot. Yeah. And I kind of forgot how much has actually been done, how many beautiful encounters we've had, how many incredible people we've met. And all the work that's gone on in the background, you know, I think if someone said to me, would you start again and go right from the beginning? I can't even answer that question, you know, because it's been tough at times, like really tough. There's times where I've cried, (laughs) where I'm just like, I literally can't do this anymore. Mm. It shouldn't be this difficult. There's times where you might have different thinking to other people that you're meant to be a team with. Mm. That's upsetting. You know, there's upsetting parts to it. There's hard bits to it Mm. as well. But there's one thing that I know that remains to be true for me is that because people say, how did you do it so I can, you know, so they can copy it. Mm. And I'm like, look, there's no point copying because how I thought it should work Mm. (laughs) intellectually didn't work that way didn't work that way then something would show up like bob jones from Mm. w3rt he's the only person whose door i didn't knock on and he just reaches out do you want to have a chat whoa (laughs) really (laughs) you know and um one thing i've learned just from feedback over the last few years if something is hard that's not the direction i'm going to be going in You know, intellectually, Mm. it might be, but that's safe. You want to stay there Mm. in that. That's comfortable. It's what you know, Mm. you know, and then a different option comes in that says, go that direction. I don't even know what's in that direction, but I trust that. Mm. And that's what's happened in the last few months is that I'm literally following an unknown Mm. with loads of other people that are a little bit unknown. And, hey, we're just going to see where it it goes. So, yeah. Um, Earlier we were talking about Jacqueline Hollows, or we brought up Jacqueline Hollows, and Mm. I've done a bit of work with her in the past. And I remember her saying what you just alluded to about if something feels too difficult, it's not to be. Don't follow that path. And I've... I think I, I've used that in my own life in as much as if someone's not getting back to me and having to keep chasing people, then just let it go. Stop sort of going there because yeah. it's not meant to be. And don't take it personally either because it's very easy to take things personally, isn't it? And think that it's, you know, they hate you or, well, me. So talking about myself here, I go I can get very much in my head and assume if I'm not hearing from somebody, it's because they hate me. I've done something wrong, blah de blah de blah But, yeah, it's just not to be. <laughs> Yeah, I could see through that lens as well. Mm. You know, when we like, all it can take is just one experience from when we're younger, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you know, that makes us feel insecure yeah. or unlovable. We're not worthy. Yeah, and that's it. We carry. It's almost like that's the that's one like the glasses that we wear, yeah. and everything that happens in life we see through that lens. Mm. Someone hasn't got back to me. Mm. 
straight away. It's almost like, oh, great, another another yeah. one that I can find an excuse yeah. for to kind of Fallon validate yeah. why I'm not worthy, yeah. I'm unlovable. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so common. That's so common. Mm. That's very normal because we tend to have an experience, i.e. even if it's a negative one, and then we attach the meaning to it and mm. then we carry that through life. You know, yeah. we don't have an amazing holiday, lock that experience in and be like, well, every holiday is going to be amazing. Yeah. Like, see every holiday through the happy lens. It yeah. tends to, I think it's, it's really sad when we kind of look at a society that has been, that does seem to innocently always look at the flaws of us. Mm. You know, you can't make your own decisions. Of course you're not clever. Yeah. You know, looking, trying to find flaws that, you know, in effect are just thoughts and then we start believing those thoughts about ourselves and we've attached all these labels. Yeah. But then intellectually we're like, there's some another voice crying out, but but you're perfect, you're perfect. And we're trying to make sense of that, but the volume on this one seems so much louder, you know, and that's the same within the mental health mm. arena. You know, there's complete innocence there to from the lens that everyone is only just trying to do the best that they can, you know, and it just happens to be up until recently, mm. the way you worked with mental health was to analyse and look in the direction of mental illness. Mm. And no one knew better until no one actually said, did you know? Are you mentally healthy? Like that conversation yeah. that someone said that to me at the beginning. It was like, well, no, mm. no one said that to me. Mm. When you were talking, and this is going to sound like you're going off on a tangent, but I think there is a point to it. Um, I was listening to, I think it was Lily Allen on a podcast, talking about how she's moved to America because culturally she th says it's a more positive way of thinking about things. So I'm just wondering, is part of the problem the British way of thinking about things, that we tend to be a bit more negative and if somebody wants to achieve something, we're trying to put them down more, or is that just a red herring? Who knows? I know, right, there's two parts to that. Mm. I laughed about going to another country because mm. my dad used to work for British Airways and every time the tarmac left the runway... That's it. I was happy. Mm. Plane went through the skies and that's it. It was mm. almost like I'd left everything. And I did. I, got, I carried that through life. Whatever happened, I needed to make sure I went on holiday mm. X amount of times. Okay, if not, I'd be stuck in darkness all mm. the time. Until I came across this conversation, the only difference that happened, it was nothing to do with the tyres leaving the runway. <laughs> It was just simply that I wasn't interested in the thinking about poor me. Mm. As soon as I'm not interested in the thinking about how rubbish my life is, you know, where I should be, how bad I am, how bad that person is, as soon as I let go of that, it created space to allow a fresh thought to come in, you know. Um, and with regards to cultures, like you know, I see that we're all human, mm. I see that we're innocently misusing thought. So, like, my son was travelling and um, we met up in Bali and me and him just island hopped for, like, three weeks, lived out of a case, had some amazing conversations, like, really insightful as well. You know, the small islands, how did they, what was it like? What did it look like through COVID? And, like, I'm fascinated by different cultures. And... Um, the conversation seemed to kind of sink as such. And they used to say, like, what do you do? I said, like, work with people in the UK and help them understand how thought and mind works. And I remember this one person in particular started cracking up laughing. Oh, so you work with the Western sickness then? <laughs> you believe all of your thoughts, don't you? And I was just crying with laughter, yeah. you know. And that's the thing. When I came across the conversation of the three principles... And um, because my dad had worked for the airline, I'd been to so many different parts of the world, so many different, like, and I'll be honest, he was a gambler as well. So they were always kind of cheap, but, you know, kind of down and out little places and little nooks and crannies and hidden islands, all of them different cultures, you know. So when 
someone said to me that I can see my past, see life, see people, see everything, not just through one perspective, but perspective, but infinite different perspectives. Not because someone's told me it, that I can actually see myself. That came to mind. Mm. And I got curious because I didn't believe that the bubble that I lived in was how it worked throughout the world. And I remember taking my son to um, Thailand, like when he was younger, we went to Phuket. Oh my gosh, he was having a field day. He was up on the tables. He's dancing with the lady boys, playing Connect Four. And, you know, it was brilliant. I mean, he mm. was better at spotting them than I was. And, you know, we went to kind of like the villages out in the back, you know, we got drawing pads and crayons and we give them to the kids and super noodles so they can lick the inside <laughs> you know but they were all happy yeah. it was nothing to do with their surroundings they were just happy mm. and um I remember coming back and I used to live in quite an affluent area and I remember us a group of us mums you were out for one evening and I was explaining what happened oh my god it's brilliant he was on the tables dancing mm. with the lady boy like just yeah mixing in culture right and um I remember two of them saying to me how disgusted they were of me, what a terrible mum I was. I can't believe that you let your son see that. I said, but that's the world. There's loads of different flavours out there, different cultures. Well, how old was he? Not that I'm judging you, but I'm just trying to get into well, their mindset. he must have been maybe 10 or 11, but I'd be honest, I've been taken to many different, you know, even then we have an idea, maybe innocently, yeah. is there a certain age before you can let your child experience a different culture. Like, we're fundamentally, there's 8 billion people on this planet and we're all human. Yeah. You know, if we look at, look into what it actually is a culture, it's just a belief. Mm. Fundamentally, yeah. we're, we're operating from the same design, yeah. the same source beyond all of that. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, I recognize that there were so many different beliefs and different cultures out in the world. I saw different levels from poverty, yeah. different financial gradings, you know, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do what I wanted yeah. to do as well, because the three principles is still so very new within the UK. Myself, I paid a lot of money to yeah. access it. You know, I'd pay it again in a heartbeat, but, well, maybe not now. I can't afford to do it now. But, you know, if I was back there, I would, I would, I would do it again mm. in a heartbeat. But to me, someone's pay grade shouldn't determine mm. the quality of care that they get. Mm. You know, and that's the thing. Even those that are working at mm. the moment, they're struggling. Yeah. You know, there's people that are working going to food banks, can't pay their bill. They're in debt with their bills, really, really struggling. So it's kind of opened it up, which is going to be part of this new chapter. This new book It's the sequel of A Slice of Happiness. Um, yeah, to see how it unfolds. But it's been absolutely fascinating. Talking about books, I actually was thinking while you were talking, have you thought about writing a book of your life and your experiences? <laughs> That's so funny. So Bob Jones from Watford and Three Rivers Trust says, because obviously he knows my, he's worked, he's mentored me now for yeah. eight years He's one, one of the people that I am 100% completely open book with and that. So he knows everything. And also as well, when he was first having conversations with me, I think he's never said, but I think he was kind of like checking me out, due diligence and, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, who is she and what's she doing? And, um, and he said to me, he said, you should write a book. So I'm going to say never stroke never, but, and I thought about it. Like, cause sometimes it comes to mind and I thought it'd be nice to share it. But what I would like to do, I think, and even then it's still percolating, right? What I would like to do at one point is after sequel two of A Slice of Happiness has been got, or there might be a sequel three, who knows? Um, at some point in the future, I would love to share the experience of community work and the different challenges that came into play the different journeys um yeah just the whole journey I'd love to be able to share that 
and see what other people have recognised. Because, I mean, it's community work. Mm. I thought you can just go straight in and, yeah, be easy. Everyone's going to open their doors. It's all nice and fluffy. <laughs> so I know, it's really... I was a little bit... So I went in there with my heart wide open and then it just literally... Almost like I was in the middle of a paintball arena. <laughs> I was getting shot from every angle and I wasn't expected it. I didn't have any protective no. armour. Um, so it was a real eye opener. And But again, I, you know, I'm, I'm blessed and grateful to be able to see what goes on behind the scenes to help understand about everything. You know, it's still one big journey. So, yeah. There might be something that might be written in the future. And even then it doesn't, it's not something that I would do to write money, mm -hmm. like for money. It's something that I would do to give people an insight into the journey of doing community work yeah. and the different aspects from sitting on the fence, not angry thinking, not judgmental thinking, you know, but to kind of, someone could read and just experience all the flavours and get an idea and, yeah, but, so I don't know. That's kind of there. But it's more like a reference book. I'd want to do it for free. I think you can do it for free on Kindle because mm. I get free books on Kindle, but that's what comes into me at the moment that feels right. So I'm just going to sit with that and see how that unfolds. When you were talking as well, I was thinking about um, we had a conversation a while back and I was I said to you, oh, I don't know how you how do you talk to homeless people? Because I feel really struggle. I really struggle. Or I used to. I changed since having this conversation with you. I do make an effort now to talk to them. Oh, bless you. But I just I think it was just embarrassment or awkwardness. But then I go back to a younger version of myself when I was about 10, 11 years old. I used to walk. I brought up Catholic and I used to walk walked to church by myself and it was about a mile down the road. My mother wasn't very well at the time. And um, there was this local, you said, uh, it's not politically correct now, but in those days, in the 80s, you'd call them a tramp, but it's obviously a homeless person, called, and this is my dad's nickname for him, I've since found out, called Dick the Spit, because he used to spit after he spoke to people, apparently. He never did that to me. And I used to have great conversations with him, and you say, oh, are you Catholic? Oh, yeah. So he says, oh, the nuns feed me, you know, and I didn't think anything of it. But now as an adult... I've got all this sort of thinking on it, or I did have all this thinking on it and how I was judging them and not wanting to be bothered with them. And, you know, I mean, yeah. I don't think like that anymore. But how? why do you think that changes from being a, like, 10, 11-year-old, I think I was at the time? And as a mature person, you sort of, you get sort of bitter and twisted and just, I don't know what it is, really. I think we innocently follow a lot of other people's thinking, yeah. don't we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that because it was the same with my son. Yeah. Mum, why are you even doing that? They can't even be bothered to get a job. Mum, mm. seriously. Mm. And then there was one Christmas where we um, organised sleep, sleeping like a kind of um, Christmas hostel yeah. for them, for the ones that had um, maybe addictions, you know, that weren't abstinent, that mm. might not have been allowed into normal hostels and... Mm. And he came down, he had a conversation with them. He just, his face was lit up at the end. He mm. said, Mum, they're incredible. Mm. The stories they've got, the journeys, and you don't know if they're right or wrong, but hey, it's nice to kind of jump yeah. into their world, isn't it? Yeah. And I think what happened is that at that time, he saw them as just human beings like him, you know, because we do, we attach meanings mm. to things, don't we? Yeah. For example, like if you hadn't, like if there was a lady called Vera Smith that you were due to me mm. and I fed you a whole load of thinking and you were used to following other people's thinking, you could innocently meet Vera Smith mm. with all that thinking and then almost like maybe being like, I don't even like you, you might even mm. cancel the meeting, mm. you know, because we do that, don't we? We follow other people's thinking. Yeah rather that takes us in a different direction from just being able to experience another person or another situation just from a very neutral space. You know, and we, we all have judgmental thinking. Like, it's funny, so, I've had so many people go, I don't have judgmental thinking. <laughs> yes, you do, <laughs> right? We all have judgmental thinking, yeah. but the difference is, do you know what it's made of? Are you taking that seriously mm. or not? You know, because judgmental thinking, it's just thought, it's just energy. 
It's a f- fabulous creation that helps us experience life so that it looks and feels so real. Yeah. That's all it is. That's all it is, you know. But that's it. You know, my son is um, on one of the journeys with my son. <laughs> I was one of these mums. Oh, you can take a picture with a snake. <laughs> this massive snake was wrapped around him. And um, I remember oh, and we done one with an orangutan as well. And I remember walking away and him saying to me, Mum, they look so real. And I said they were. And something crossed over his face. But anyway, in the years to follow, he's like, Mum, I don't like snakes. I'm scared. Because obviously he's had that experience mm. where whatever thinking went through his head at mm. that moment, he carried that that little box with him, right? So every time he saw a snake, he experienced whatever that was through thought. And... Um, and I remember him saying something about it. He said it again when he was travelling. And I said, if you didn't, if they were just thoughts that came into your head that I don't like snakes and you didn't have the feeling, mm. would you be as scared? Because I'm curious as well. I want to kind of just see. And he was like, actually, no, I don't think I would because then they're just words, aren't they? Mm. You know, so I do get curious and I'm like, you know, I wonder, is it the feelings? You know, because I look back, there were certain feelings that I got that I thought I shouldn't be having. Mm. I should not be having depressed thoughts. I should not be having suicidal thoughts. Mm. I should not be having, but like not so much the thoughts, but the feelings Mm. attached to it. Because I can have loads of negative thoughts flow through my head. But then when if I reflect, I'm like, I didn't get that kind of feeling with it. So, yeah, is it the feeling? You know, because if we're saying that we feel what we think 100% of the time, mm. like, how incredible would it be if we could see that all feelings are made of the same thing? It's the same design. Like cloud. We, mm. None of us look up in the sky and go, well, you see that, those kind? I like those clouds. Those ones, oh, my God, they're terrible. You don't want to, seriously, they're really bad, those clouds. <laughs> It's like me saying, I don't like coming in here and going, do you know what? I don't like the gravity in my kitchen. I'm not happy with it. It's like it's formless, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, it's just like, do you know what? I had a conversation. I was in a meeting last night and you know I just said, I said, do you know what? I've literally just seen a teeny tiny little bit of this. Mm. And just that teeny tiny little bit has helped me in so many areas of my life. Mm. It's helped me be open to listen and feel what the right path is to go in certain areas with a slice of happiness. Like, honestly, there's so much that it's helped me with. And I've just seen a teeny tiny little bit of it because it really is infinite. The word infinite's got a whole new meaning to me, yeah. <laughs> you know. Infinite used to mean run to the back of the garden and back, whereas <laughs> now infinite is just never ending it's mm. fast and and it's a journey there's no rush to get anywhere and if we have more understanding as to how th- mind thought consciousness even just those parts mm. you know that's without including like creativity and wisdom and resilience and well if we understood how that incredible formless force works fully mm. wow wow what a world we'd live in right what a world we'd live in. Mm. Be incredible and very beautiful. So, yeah. I know that, I don't know whether you know the stats, but isn't there a stat somewhere that we're all only so much away from being homeless? Is it a figure of so many thousands of pounds or something away from being homeless? I just heard that a while yeah, back. It's interesting, isn't it? Mm. I don't know where that came from. But they say you're only, like, is it one paycheck or three paychecks? Got it. But then what if they've got three jobs and that one paycheck isn't actually what would make them? So I don't yeah. know I don't know where that statistic yeah. came from or how yeah. it was created. Yeah. or Because, again, you know, with, um, like, the research we have on the, that's carried out with the work we do has got human ethics approval. Yeah. You know, but research comes in many different flavours. Mm. It can be doctored to suit certain well, people's. Yeah, I don't know that for a fact, no. but I'm curious, yeah. you know. I just know the lengths that Innate Health Research and Commentary University went through mm. and the guidelines that we have to make sure it's not contaminated. Mm. 
you know, even asking questions and and how, which has been, Christ, that, that just that part alone has been a real journey. Like, I didn't have a clue. I didn't know what a scale was or quantitative or qualitative data. I didn't know anything. God, do you know, I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow, yeah, I've learned and seen so much. So, um there was a figure this morning, I don't know if you watched the news this morning, about um, by 2040, the amount of elderly people who are going to be on the poverty line is going to be increasing so much compared to what it is now. And again, it's future thinking, yeah. isn't it? How do we know? Yeah, exactly. We didn't know what we were going to say today. We don't no. even know what's happening no. in the next two minutes, right? And talking about judgmental thinking, oh, this is, makes me feel really bad at admitting to it, but I'm going to admit to it anyway. This news story, the woman, she has nails the colour of mine, and she's talking about... Um, it's beautiful, by the way. Oh, thank you. I really love that colour. <laughs> <It's> gorgeous. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> love so it. I was having them done after going to a mm. wedding last year. Anyway. Beautiful. Um just to treat myself once a month. But the, yes, this lady, I had judgmental thinking because she was talking about being poverty stricken. I don't have enough money at the end of the week. And I thought, well, you've got enough money to have your butt nails done. And I thought, <coughs> that's awful me thinking that really, isn't it? No, it's just thought, isn't yeah, it? I know. And that's the thing. We yeah. tend to have a thought, then we attach meaning yeah. to it. Yeah. And that's what we do. And then, it, you know, we just kind of stay in the experience of yeah. that meaning and thought. Yeah. You know, when we can see it is literally just energy that's yeah. just flowing through us. Yeah. And we can pick and choose which one we want to play with. It's just a game. It's not even real, any of it. Yeah. You know, it's not even real. It's just something that I've got incredible access to that I can play with. I mean, honestly, like with, <laughs> like playing with thought. So a thought came into my head at Christmas, like, because where I'm staying at the moment, there's loads of, like, little kind of really quaint villages and they're, in, they're all really into, like, looking after their houses and yeah. putting the Christmas decorations all so beautifully looked after. Mm. I mean, it honestly, it felt like driving through Winter Wonderland and this thought came <laughs> in my head about elves. So I decided to play with that thought for, like, a day like and believe that elves were real. Right? <laughs> oh my god, I literally just went into child mode. Yeah. I literally just went into child mode. And I'm literally I'm in the car giggling away to myself and walking around like ooh <laughs> like wait. But I, I can play with it. Yeah. I can play with it. You know, don't get me wrong, yet do I forget sometimes that I can play with it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do I fall into the um into the illusory part where I forget that it's illusory and all of a sudden it's real. Yes, I do. You know, I'm not. The difference is, I think now, is that at some point I notice mm. and then I'm, I can jump out of it, you know. But, yeah, I still have... And this is the thing, it's like I love the fact that I can have angry thinking, sad thinking, jealous thinking, judgmental thinking. Mm. I can have the whole damn thing. Yeah. Right? I can have the whole damn thing. Good news, because you know what? I'm human. Yeah. Yeah. I, and thank God I know now that that's normal. Yeah. I didn't know that. No. No one told me that. And do you know one word that's coming up in the session, especially like the last three sessions of the programs we've running, where so many people like their massive insight and freedom for them has been that they never realised that they had choice. Because mm. every time that first thought comes in, we believe that and we run with that. They said, I didn't know that I didn't have to pay attention to it or breathe life into it. And I could let it go and it will move. And then a different one comes in and that I can actually pick and choose. I never knew I had that choice. Yeah. How cool is that, right? It blows my... I'm like sat here like a child. Like, <laughs> I just love it. I love it. And I love it when people have insights in the programs mm. on an insight that I might have had that I can see it deeper or maybe I've forgotten and I can just sit there and smile or I see it maybe in a different area of my life. It's just like the world's... It's like if, the world's most beautiful dance. Yeah. You know, like if you can imagine every single dance in the world and how all of those different dances just work beautifully together. Because ultimately it's just dance, isn't it? Yeah. Have you seen the film Elf, by the way? That's one of my favourite films. Yeah. How oh, is it? How <laughs> yeah. weird that I said that yeah, then, right? Yeah, I know, yeah. 
And I think it is. I think it is such a good film as well because it's basically well, Will Ferrell, six foot four, or whatever he is, playing an elf, and you know he's so, such so childlike, and yeah, just yeah. I think it taps into as an adult or in a child, I suppose, and that's why we enjoy it so much. You know, we just yeah. maybe remembering how things used to be when we were children, and maybe we just need to recapture it a bit more. Yeah, it's so interesting that you say that because I don't. I feel that I lost out on the inner child because mm. of the circumstances yeah. that I was in. And I remember, with, like, inner child, inner child to me is the state that we were in when we were born. Yeah. Before we was even interested in that intellectual thought, personal mm. thought, is there's no fear. We're literally just feeling our thinking moment to moment. Yeah. There's no fear. There's no colour. There's no religion. There's no money. It's just beautiful oneness. I remember my son at the nursery, four kids, different nationalities mm. and backgrounds. And do you know that every morning they were so excited to see each other. Yeah. They'd literally hug each other. They'd hug each other so tight <laughs> like that. But And that is always there and that I see is our natural state. Like we call it maybe in a child, but I see that that's our natural state. Mm. And I remember the first time where I was, I was in that space. I felt relaxed. I felt calm. And I was walking down the lane to go into with the woods and there was this really big puddle. And I remember that little voice, jump. <laughs> no, I can't do that. <laughs> right. Go on, I dare you, jump. And I did. So I find I jumped in the both feet in the middle of the really big that happened to be quite deep puddle. And I just laughed, you know. At some point, who made the rules up? What yeah. we can when who made this rule up that at a certain age you have to stop these certain behaviours? Like I'm not breaking the law. No. You know, I'm just experiencing a bit of crazy thinking at the time when I wanted to run with it. It felt free yeah. when I done that, you know? And yeah, in fact, that's weirdly enough, that came up in a session and there was one woman, she's like, do you know, I'm turning this, this old, she goes, and I'm going to be having the biggest tattoo done on me, yeah. you know? And it was just freedom of thinking, yeah. isn't it? Like I thought for some reason, I believed this thought or someone, I believe someone else is thinking that you can't eat breakfast for dinner. Mm. You can't eat dinner for lunch. Mm. And like, honestly, when I saw that, that that was just thought and completely made up, I remember doing that. I, sit, I was sitting there cracking up, laughing at myself. <laughs> I felt really naughty. Yeah. Right? I'm <laughs> going to the, the breakfast rules. police are going to come out and tell me off. Right? But there's so much freedom. Yeah. There's so much freedom in it, yeah. you know, and... Yeah, and you can just play with it. It's brilliant. I've now got this. Um, I've never really watched Vicar of Dibley, but there's a famous scene where Dawn French jumps into this puddle and I think it ends up being out there. <laughs> oh, no, mine wasn't that deep. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that, yeah. you know, and I do recognise that now as yeah. well in different programmes and different films yeah. where I can kind of see the freedom of the thinking, yeah. the creativity. Yeah. That... You, you know, creativity, that kind of free freedom that can flow through us. Yeah. When we just stop believing the crappy thinking. Yeah. You know? I mean, seriously, I look back now, I was just so bored of listening to it. Mm. And then I thought other people were getting bored, so I'd ad lib it. <laughs> oh, did I forget to tell you about this <laughs> bit? Oh, my gosh. It's crazy. But, Yeah. Did you find freedom also leaving your, I say, nine to five job? Did you find that was quite freeing as well, leaving that to focus on a slice of happiness? It was the unknown. So when I, I'd already decided at Chris, before Christmas that I was definitely pulled. You know, I'm going into a very fixed, tight environment mm. where people have money to buy houses. Yeah. Right? And then going into a different environment where it's just very free mm. and there's no money involved. And the Oops. the gap <laughs> just started getting bigger and yeah. bigger and bigger. Um, and I was deepening my own understanding. I was having more insights. And, yeah, so I kind of knew that 
at some point that was something I wanted to do. And I did. I mentioned it to my business partner before Christmas. And I said, just to let you know, I don't see my future here mm. as here anymore. Whereas before, yeah, I'm going to be this old lady Until still like <laughs> hobbling in trying to sell the houses, right? And um, she got caught up in some anxious thinking. Mm. And I'm like, in the end, I was like, look, just forget I said anything. I was just sharing my thinking that this mm. isn't going to be in my future. I don't have any like now element to it. Um but then we went into COVID. We went into COVID and I remember it was April the 9th and it was like, it was very quiet and there was this loud tannoy because obviously at the same time there were discussions going on. What are we going to do? A state agency was one of the sectors. They shut down, mm. shut the doors. Mm. And by that time, I'd already started experiencing like fresh thought and creativity. We can do that. But she was very fixed and bless her. She was caught up in a lot of fearful thinking, mm. you know. Um, but yeah, April the 9th, it was like a massive tannoy. Now's your time to leave. And I was like, whoa, OK. And that's it. Just sent an email, said I'm leaving. Mm. That's it. She's like, you're setting up another estate agency. Oh, and it's like, no, I know. <laughs> you know, because again, on like on yeah. paper, that was a bit crazy. You've yeah. got a very well-established business. You're a single mum. Mm. And you, as far as I know, you haven't got any guaranteed income coming mm. in. So what are you going to do? But I just kind of trusted that it would work out. Yeah. If worse, what comes to worse, I can go to a food bank or mm. I can... Go and stack shelves in a supermarket. I don't have any ego wrapped around no. that, you know. It just is. I'll do what it takes. Um, yeah. And that's where the journey started. And, again, it was the unknown. But I listened. And I think even the crazy part is that, like, I listened to that wisdom. I listened to that fresh thought. There's a, There's obviously been times where it's come through. I've ignored it. Mm gone with my intellect that's like no you want to do it this way <laughs> you know of course there's times where I've gone with that it goes Pete Tong and mm. then I'm like actually with hindsight I wish mm. I should have listened to that mm. but I think growing up in the environment that I was in I did I think I relied more heavily on that wisdom than mm. I actually give credit to it mm. you know because I, I would listen to that inner voice quite a lot because I didn't know, I wasn't, as a, you know, I wasn't taught anything. I wasn't explained how this world of form works. Mm. Even changes in a woman and relationships. I certainly wasn't experiencing love. I didn't have hugs. I didn't have any of that. So I didn't, I literally used to kind of look at the rest of the world and think, oh, I've got a nice feeling there. How? What are they doing? Yeah. And follow that. Um. So, yeah, I guess I've spent a lot of life in the unknown and crazily enough, it's something's held me up to where I am today, sitting, having a beautiful conversation with you. So, yeah. We've just been given the time, five minutes left. So have you got anything else you'd like five to talk minutes. about? In the Did next you know, five it's like, don't you think, right, oh. how time is man-made? Yeah. Isn't it? Like, I haven't got access to a clock. Literally, this last 55 yeah. minutes... It's almost like a split second. That's yeah. how it feels to me. Yeah. How weird is that? I know. I know. When you're just in the moment and just present, how time doesn't exist. Yeah. Just a moment in time. It's an artificial construct. Isn't it? See what I mean? This honestly, everyone, seriously, get into the conversation of the three principles. There's so much like, ooh, oh, oh yeah, I know that. Honestly, it's brilliant. Yeah. It's almost like someone's giving you the secret handbook to life. Yeah. You know, like you know, like that coat you can put on and make yourself invisible it's like that <laughs> where you're like oh so that's how they do that oh wow that's honestly there's so many oohs and ahs in this conversation yeah about yourself life other people just mundane things it's just the coolest conversation around it really is and of course it educates you about your mental health. Yeah. So you're able to access your healthy state or at least know 
that your healthy state, your mental health is always there 100% of the time. That's so cool because that just frees up so much time yeah. to go and have fun with this, yeah. right? Um, so, yeah, it's the coolest conversation around. I love it. Yeah. Not that you can tell, obviously. <laughs> and feelings so. are only ever temporary as well. So no matter how bad you're feeling, it's going to pass. Yeah. Yeah. It always passes. Yeah. How cool is that? That's like if it's cloudy outside, I'm not going to start having a breakdown and a tantrum <laughs> on the floor because it's only temporary. It yeah. moves. It's almost like our feelings and thoughts are yeah. mirroring like the weather system. Mm. It passes. Yeah. Yeah. And the same does with that. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. We as human beings, I tell you what, our design is flawless. 100% flawless. And I'm so happy to know as well, everything that I thought wasn't okay, I know now is okay yeah. and normal. And I'm like, oh, thank God for that. <laughs> thank you. <That's, laughs> I'm relieved. So, yeah, but... So, yeah, I know we're coming to them, but I do want to say thank you. Is that right? right. Thank for you for coming. For inviting me today. And thank you for driving up the whichever motorway it was. <laughs> what was it? The M40? M40. Yeah, I just felt, yeah, I felt happy driving up to Birmingham. Good. I don't think I've been to Birmingham Have before. You? I think this is my first. <laughs> I'm a virgin Birmingham girl. <laughs> Not anymore, though. No. Um and I really loved it. As soon as I came out of this car park, yeah. this woman just started <laughs> chatting to me. And I'm like, wow, they're so friendly up here. <laughs> what is the strange thing that's happening? <laughs> yes, you, another human being just talking to me. Um, but yeah. yeah, but no, thank you so much. It's been lovely. It really has. And it's a nice opportunity to kind of talk about things out yeah. loud as well. It's been a while since I've just kind of reflected and reminisced and... And remembered some really beautiful parts of the journey. So thank you for helping me to um, to go back and revisit them. You know, I've got a nice ready brick glow now. So thank you. That's okay. Are you still doing um, one on one coaching as well, or are you um, just focused purely on slice of happiness? Because I know you had a website. I do a slice of happiness. Um, yes, I set up a private platform. Did I do anything with that? No, I think I only saw one client because I was too, <laughs> too, too busy. busy doing the volunteer yeah. work. But with the transition that's taking place, um, with the transition that's taking place, obviously a lot of the work that I'm still doing is volunteering and I okay. think that will be up until maybe March next year where I might be able to get like a, an average mm. salary. But yeah. You know, so, yeah, I do. You know, it's not to say that I don't have private clients, but the, the thing is, yes, I will see private mm. clients, but only if there's space around the community yeah. work. Yeah. Because the community work, that journey, uh, there's words that can't describe it. There's something really incredible happening there, mm. um, make a big difference. So if there's space, then, yeah. I'll see they're human at the end of yeah. the day, you know. So I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. But as long as everyone realises we don't give, obviously, the charity work we do and mm. kind of obviously that's one point and that – it was always meant to be, oh, I do private work and just do like a little bit on the side for charity. Yeah, you're on your way around. <laughs> it's literally charity is my life. Yeah. It's how I do life now. Yeah. It's a way of living. Okay. Um, and the other bits fit around it. So, okay. yeah. Right, I'll put any links that you want on the descriptions because this is going to go onto YouTube and um, so that'll be Ooh. to do with a slice of happiness and Thank if you want you. your private website or Instagram or whatever up there as well, I don't know, but we can sort that yeah. out. Yeah, am I able to give that to you at the end of this month? Yes, you are. When it goes live? Yes, yeah, I'll give you I'll give you the heads up when it's going to go live. So Fantastic, yeah. Because yeah. that, wow, how cool is that? See, universal dots connecting, yeah. right? Yeah. How mad is that? Because that might slightly be around the same yeah. time. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's so many things that are happening that are just feeding back to me. Count on you on the right path, girl. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. It's all in the bigger plan. <laughs> yeah, I wish I wish someone would tell me what the plan is. <laughs> I'm just following the little I'm following the little daffodils <laughs> and, and the little jumping squirrels. Aww. That's it. That's all I'm doing. We'll see where it takes little, me. Little snow white following the <laughs> Yeah. There's like a whole bunch of like little Cartoon characters. characters that are just coming along for the ride as well. It's like Forrest Gump. Yeah. 
You know, Forrest Gump start walking and then yeah. all of a sudden yeah. there's all these other wonderful people that yeah. are all looking in the same direction. That's what it feels yeah. like. Yeah. No one knows where Forrest Gump is going. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, thank you for that, Caroline. Oh, really lovely you. speaking to you. And, and you um, too. see you soon. <laughs> Bye. I'll see you in about two minutes once yes. we finish this. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you.